Do you find disposing of garden waste is a bit of a problem? I mean, you can compost it, you can bonfire it, you can take it to the recycling tip. But in a middle-sized garden, actually, I find that I have more garden waste than I do have ways of disposing of it. So one of the things we're looking at in this video is, should you have a garden shredder? It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. So let's look at the four different types of disposing of your garden waste. One, composted. Now, if you've got a large garden, you've got room for several compost bins. And also, you've probably got room to store a shredder and lots and lots of garden waste, so you need a shredder. So I think that if your garden is really big, the decision of whether or not to have your own shredder is probably much easier. And if your garden is much smaller, if it's, say, less than about 50 feet long or 15 metres and only the width of your house, then you've probably got a lot less garden waste. If you've got a council garden waste bin recycling service where they just give you a bin and you fill it up and you put it out every two weeks, then that will probably deal with most things. And then if you have a tree or a shrub professionally trimmed, you can add the cost of disposing of that to what you pay the professional. But it is worth remembering that if they're going to take it away, they are going to be paid for that. So there is a cost to all kinds of garden waste disposal. But if you have a middle-sized garden like this, this garden is 100 feet long and 80 feet wide at its widest and 40 feet wide nearer the house. It's an L shape. And we have about 11 trees and a whole load of shrubs. And then we've got obviously um, weeds and lawn clippings and all that. And so we do have a lot of garden waste. And what we've been doing has been, have been taking it to the recycling centre. Now, we take a whole car full because it seems silly to go to the recycling centre every single time you drop something back. And also it makes the car messy, so that's a bit of a fiddle. But of course it means we have a pile of stuff on the terrace which builds up and builds up and it's somewhat unsightly and it's a bit inconvenient. Bonfires are one way that you can get rid of garden waste. But if you live in a town or city, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to bonfire whenever you like. There may be restrictions against bonfires altogether and you need to check about where you live. My husband built an incinerator out of galvanised wire mesh fence panels, which looks like chicken wire but is stronger. And that is quite a good, safe way of having a bonfire, but we still have to make sure it's not too windy a day. If it's been a very, very dry spell, that's also a worry. And we have to find a place in the garden where there's no chance of it setting fire to a fence, to trees, to a shed, or indeed to someone else's property. And I have seen those little sort of dustbin incinerators in small gardens and I've always asked, oh, did they work? And I have to say, I've had a rather vague replies. In fact, I can't really remember anything anyone said. So I think that gives you an indication that possibly those small incinerators perhaps aren't the answer to everyone's prayer. So bonfires are not ideal. So we decided to look into whether a garden shredder would help in our garden. Of course, we are composting already, and we have three compost bins which are hidden around the side of the garden, but I don't think we've really got space for more than three. And the thing to understand about compost is that you either have fast compost or you have easy compost. Easy compost, you throw absolutely anything on, you cover the bin up, the compost bin up, or you don't cover it up, and 18 months later, you've got lovely compost. You don't really have to do a lot to it. But if you want compost more quickly, say in a few months, you have to take notice of really what percentage of brown and green you have in the compost. And you also have to make sure that everything that goes into the compost is cut up quite small. Now, you can do that manually, but we've just got too much garden waste to do that manually. The advantage, of course, to fast compost is that it saves you buying something like well-rotted garden manure or soil improver from garden centres. So there is going to be some saving in cost if we buy a shredder and speed up our composting. But we wanted to know if it would save us time and also whether it would save us effort. Because taking these bags of garden waste to the local recycling centre was taking time. It's also quite a strain. You're lugging big bags of garden waste in and out of the car and then you're heaving them over the top of the hopper. And it was giving us back strain. So that was really another issue. Would it be easier to have a garden shredder to compost more? So we decided to set out on how to choose a garden shredder. If you read up about choosing a garden shredder, it will talk about the difference between having a blade and a roller, but that didn't really seem very important to us. We looked at the garden shredder reviews across a lot of sites and review sites because 
one site can have fake reviews, but it's very unlikely that every site will. And also the sheer volume of the reviews makes a difference. And what people actually say, looking at four star reviews, five star reviews, two star reviews, it all gives you an idea of what people are finding good and bad about a particular product. Because of course, there's probably no best product. There's only the best product for you. And in the end, the decision came down to cost, maneuverability and robustness. The problem with the more expensive garden shredders is that they are heavier, so they're not so maneuverable. But of course, that means that they're more robust. We saw significantly fewer complaints about robustness with those heavier, more expensive garden shredders. There's a much cheaper, more upright garden shredder which is lighter and easier to manoeuvre. But we did see, generally, slightly more complaints about the robustness. Because we've got a lot of garden waste, we decided to take robust over manoeuvrability. But of course, that decision might not be the same for you. We chose, in the end, a Bosch AXT 25TC. And I think it's important to say at this point that we paid for it with our own money, we paid full price, and we have had no contact with Bosch, the company. The first thing to remember when using a garden shredder is safety. You must use thick, heavy-duty gloves. We used heavy-duty rose pruning gauntlets. And you should protect your eyes because things can flick up into your eyes and um, ear defenders against the noise. And of course, whenever using any garden machinery, you should also use shoes that would protect your feet if something fell on them. If garden waste material clogs up the blades, turn the shredder off, unplug it, You'll probably have to take the top off, but then be very, very careful about the blades. You will need something like a stick or something to unclog it, because even if you're wearing gloves, the blades are so sharp they could cut through the gloves. The next thing we discovered is that you definitely need to practice using the garden shredder. It is going to be fiddly at first. You get into a rhythm eventually, you work out how to put the different kinds of things in, there'll be roots going through that have soil on them. If that soil is damp, they will, it will clog it up. When it's dry, it won't. So give your garden shredder a few sessions before you start to think, oh God, I don't like this. I did see some negative reviews of garden shredders on various sites, which suggested that people had found them difficult to use at first. They'd given them one or two sessions. They'd found things jammed. They had to keep stopping and starting and they just said, this is no good for me. I think it's just a question of spending really a couple of days and that'll be three or four sessions to get into a rhythm to understand your garden shredder. It said in the description it could handle up to a quarter of a tonne of garden waste an hour. It's very unlikely as an amateur gardener you're going to reach anything like that. We certainly didn't. So it is going to take longer than you think. And also it says that it can handle wet material, but on the whole it's going to be much easier and faster and it's less likely to clog if you make sure that you only shred your garden waste when it's properly dry. Having said all that, we're actually delighted. For the first time in years, we have no piles of garden waste sitting on our terrace, waiting to be taken to the recycling tip. The garden waste shredded occupies so much less space in the compost bin than it did when we just threw it in there. So we've managed to get an enormous pile of garden waste into our compost bin. And because it's shredded, it's already rotting down. And you can see when you put a fork in there to aerate it, there is literally almost smoke coming out. So I feel quite confident that in three or four months time, I'm going to have usable garden compost and I will be able to save money on not ordering garden manure. In terms of the strain on your back, obviously lugging sacks in and out of cars and then in and out over hoppers is a strain on your back. But, but standing over a shredder feeding it for several hours is also a strain on your back. But the great advantage of having a shredder in your home is that if you just shred a certain amount just when you've done a job, which is what we've just done, I've just clipped a whole load of stuff from the front garden and we've just shredded it there and then, we haven't let it pile up. So it wasn't a long session. Doing things in short sessions is much better for your back than doing a great big marathon. As I said, I think we're really, really pleased with our choice, both our choice of shredder and our decision to invest in a shredder. And that means we'll be doing much more composting than we did. There are often several ways of doing anything in gardening, and it's a question of finding the way that works best for you. So I've put together a playlist of practical tips, which includes something like how to weed and should you do dig or no dig, that's till or no till, so that you can make the decisions 
as to what really would work for you, taking into account your garden, your lifestyle, and what you enjoy doing. And that'll be at the end of this video. And if you'd like more tips, ideas, and inspiration for your middle-sized garden, then do subscribe to the Middle-Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.